the intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Welcome back to the channel, everybody. And as we tend to do before the launch of a new arc, which is coming soon, we're going to take a look at officers today and various screenshots that you provided of battles around the galaxy. And before we do that, I want to go ahead and remind you that officers come out every month. So it's very important for you to catch videos like this one on your YouTube channel. And if you're not doing that, well, you could be missing out because usually we get at least two new officers every month. But what if we had a month coming up where we got even more than that? What if we got several? Well, maybe you would just have to stay tuned and find out. And if you have any idea what I'm talking about, hints, maybe, I don't know. Comment section down below. Real curious what people think could be coming this month in Star Trek Fleet Command because there's so many things that go across so many universes. So many people that go across so many universes. Let's talk Star Trek with our first view of the day, which I actually really enjoyed seeing this one because this is, and, and the first thing that got commented to me was, oh, well, that's just a high level player beating up on a low level player. In fact, the player on your left is a level 36 player. Player on your right is a level 30 player. So not exactly having a 50 beaten up on a little baby account now, are we? This is simply a great example of crewing and why crewing matters so much. So in this example, we have a tourist with Lenar, Kang, and then Honor Guard Wharf going against a Chang, Kurla, Votlin, I'm sorry, Koth run. And that's messed up for several reasons. Now, the reason I love this one is it's going to give me a chance to recap some of the original officers in the game. So let's transition to where we can actually see Koth. We're going to start right to left. And you see Koth's ability is a plus 20% to kinetic damage while the opponent has a hull breach. So we've got to have a hull breach to take advantage of that. And plus 20% kinetic damage is okay. I mean, if you look at what we're doing with Curla, we're doing something slightly similar. So we're going to keep moving into, here's Chang, cry havoc. As long as the opponent's ship hull health is under 60%, increases the damage of the weapons by 10%. So when you start taking damage, he will give you a damage boost. He's like a very early version of what we see from Odysseus, just not as good. But still that same idea where we're boosting damage uh, every round. So this is just a um, little one baby. Yeah, it's, it's not that big. It's, it's not. Synergy helps. Synergy helps. And then Dogs of War. If the ship deals a critical hit to the opponent's ship while it has hull breach, Chang has a 50% chance of delaying its next attack by that weapon for one round. Hmm, okay. And then finally, Curla attack maneuvers increases the critical hit damage by 50% when firing with a kinetic weapon. So, I actually don't mind the kinetic type builds and the kinetic weapon focus. However, if you notice as we we're going through these officers, nobody creates hull breach, which is really, really important because you saw Koth needs that as well as Chang's officer ability. So, nobody's creating hull breach for this D3, which I do really love the D3 as a ship because it has a firing pattern that makes it great for testing. One weapon per round, so it has two weapons, one per round fires twice each. Makes it really easy to calculate things like damage and what's going on in the battle. But here, it ends up losing out for several reasons. Number one is the tourist at the top is running Kang as captain. So the first thing that we're going there is one, Kang can actually provide you with a hull breach. And if you remember, there's a background bonus to running hull breach. The Deheart Master, the start of each battle, Kang has an 80% chance of getting a hull breach to the opponent for three rounds. The background bonus to hull breach is it gives an added multiplier to critical damage. So normally how critical damage works is, one, you create all your damage. So all your research, your officer bonuses, etc. bam, there's your damage from your weapons. And then a critical hit multiplies that damage by your critical percentage. So let's say you've got a 180% bonus, you're gonna multiply that by 1.8. Boom, there's a critical. But if hull breach is active, you got another multiplicative right after that. So even more damage, as well as the secondary ability, the officer ability. At the start of each battle, it increases the accuracy of the ship by uh, X percent, max being 1600, uh, tier four of mine being 800%. And why is that important? Well, because the main thing that a interceptor has like the D3 is dodge. So to overcome that, especially with a low tier two star ship, you need more accuracy. So one, they're dropping the mitigation the opponent, creating hull breach. Now, why is that hull breach important? Because of Honor Guard Wharf. And I love that there are so many Klingons in this one and a, and a bloody Romulan. But so many Klingons make me happy. So Honor Guard Wharf, what's his ability? Remember, for the first 
eight rounds of combat against players increasing that critical hit chance depending on your tier level one tier one as you can see right here it's a 45 percent chance now critical we just said damage critical boom boom boom, boom and then a hull breach boom 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 so we've got if that procs we've got hull breach criticals we're creating more damage for the tourists than we would normally do finally what's that last little bit that's lenar now why is lenar important he is an often forgotten officer, and he shouldn't be because the anti-faction officer is some of the most valuable in the game. He is a Klingon anti-faction officer, increases the damage when fighting Klingon ships. That maxes out at a pretty nice percentage here. You see, I've only got mine at tier four right now, as I need 13 more shards to finally max him out. But very, very valuable card there, very useful, and I expect to see more of it, hopefully, when people are watching more of these videos. But in general, that is a great crew going against a bigger ship. Not a big difference in player level there. All about research and crewing, and that's how you're able to have that battle happen. And it shocks many people. The shock heard around the world. You don't see a lot of two-star getting a lot of love. Let's transition to another one here. We've got a Saladin versus a Kumari. And this Kumari is literally just all over the place. And even the Saladin, I would make minor alterations to the crew. If that is a max morale crew, when I mean max, so you would go and see like mine, and let me scroll it down just a little bit so you can see them. So you can see, oh, come, come on, come on, can you scroll just a little bit more? Just, just, okay, well, we'll minimize it here in a second. But let's just pull up my bones, and that way we can look at it this way, and I'm going to minimize this on the screen so you don't have to see it as much. There you go. So bones here, mine is max, excellent medicine, as well as I'm a doctor, not a blank, 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 blank. McCoy gives a bonus to the officer abilities in combat research. I'm sorry, synergy will make this even stronger. And then you have this increases the defense of all officers on the bridge. Why is that important? Because Spock uses that stat. Now, here's one that's great. When you have maxed morale. So when I mean max morale, it means Bones and Spock are max. You don't need Kirk max, but max Kirk would help. Where this is going to give you 1,000% shield regen based on the defensive stats because that's what he does so he would be 750 maxed out naturally with bones as captain this goes to over a thousand basically meaning your shields are generally not going to go down and in a level 20 fight or level 28 fight in early 30s this is a very very powerful ability for a lot of players it gives them a lot of success and we've seen one of the most popular crews of all time on a saladin is in fact max morale you see it run all the time at least I assume you do if you're watching a lot of videos or getting into a lot of PvP matches with veteran players. But you might go, why does that work? Well, now you know. I made a video on this probably two years ago, so this is almost like a refresher. Bones, Spock, Kirk, Bones as captain will give you 1,000% shield regen, which is actually really useful and really nice. Now, let's talk about what's on the opposite side. We've got Kirk, which is really interesting because we've got Kirk on both of these, but Kirk is giving you a boost to officer stats. It's very curious while we're running it here because we're paired with Arcadi. And I guess I can understand what they're maybe wanting to do. You got morale. And then you got a plus to shield health here. I mean, I'm not saying that that doesn't work, but a 16%, you see, this is a tier four. I, I could max it out, but there's really no point for me to max out an uncommon officer and waste my Federation credits. There's really no advantage to this. The, the shield health increase is so minimal you'd actually get more versus from a basic lower deck officer like rutherford if you're wanting to boost shield health and you know this actually has no lower decks in either one of these battles but it's just not a very conducive crew to winning i mean i i don't really have a problem if somebody wants to use grush uh, the reason that you would have grush on the side here where we find my random syndicate officer because he's still by himself grush where you at buddy why do i always lose grush there he is right in front of me i need to upgrade him to tier three, but uh, we got to get him home first. But fight or flight, increasing the warp range, I'm okay with that on a Kamari, but only if you've got the other two officers making that a viable run. And Arcadi and Kirk are not a viable run for any real purpose. I mean, you're not going to do hostiles with that. The shield health isn't really helping you. Then again, Kirk running morale with his officer ability, I mean, just, yeah, there's nothing really there. So, it's not that the officers don't work. I mean, we have seen before people put like energy-based officers on a kinetic-based ship. This is just one of the ones where it just doesn't really work. There's nothing there. Inspirational, giving you morale, but all morale does in the background is give you a bonus to piercing stats, but not a high one. And then the leader giving you a bonus to officer stats, but there's nobody here that really needs that. So it's just kind of a curious loadout. 
where it's just not being very effective for the player. Last one, because we're going at very long time here. We've got this one, more Klingons. There's not enough Klingons. If there are more Klingons here, it might have worked, but it also depends on what you're fighting. Now, I will say this. I understand what this tier three auger on the right side was trying to do. They've got Gorkon, Kang, and then Marcus. They were really just trying to fight as many people as they could and take on multiple ship types by having multiple piercings. Problem is, and I say this all the time, when you crew for the most generic thing possible, you're going to lose the people who do not do that. And this is one of my favorite auger crews for if you don't have a ton of epics, if you don't have a high crit run that you can you know build around and everything if you just need a basic auger crew this is a fantastic basic auger crew Giorgio, dj aoki and ash tyler why because you're getting four things in one and we love efficiency i'm a huge fan of efficiency you're a huge fan of efficiency and we talk about it all the time on my discord we have a stats calculation channel that really kind of dives into some of these numbers so why does this matter and why does it work and why is it good here not there etc well, let me go ahead and explain. So, George is going to launch Burning. Now, for those that remember, Burning has a background effect when it comes to uh, damage boosting. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, damage reduction, not damage boosting. But reduces 1% of the whole health of the enemy you know, each round. Now, that has value. But let's talk about DJ Oki. Now, I haven't maxed him out because, sadly, he was not described for a long time. So, I didn't max him out. But he is somebody that I probably will end up maxing out. But when I was going through my auger... This wasn't a card that was used heavily because the description was wrong for so long and they actually disabled him to work in Armadas, which is really, really dumb. So he works exactly like Zhao or Joe, as y'all want to pronounce it. Zhao. <laughs> he works with, at the beginning of each round, if the opponent is burning, increases the armor, shield, deflection, and dodge of the ship by X percent of the health. Now, I do want to point out that he still reads wrong in a battle log, but this is correct. They finally changed this one to match what actually happens in the game. So he's a mitigation booster, similar to how 5 of 10 is a mitigation booster when captain. So paired with Giorgio, you're getting a mitigation boost for your big old auger. Now, why is that important? Because you want the auger to grow in damage with the obliterator weapon. Auger works best with longer fights because the obliterator weapon will grow, but you need obliteration to have burning to really take effect. And for that, Giorgio was queen. Now, Nero would work here, but Nero cannot launch that first round, but he can launch all every round before uh, after. So if you have a 100-round fight, he can do 99. She can do every single round if the RNG procs. See right there, beginning of each round at tier 1, level 150%. That's giving you burning, which activates the weapon of the obliterator, which is a cumulative damage growth based on the level of the auger. Now let's back out and look at Ash Tyler real quick. Ash Tyler giving you a little bit of synergy as well. The beast inside at the start of each round, if the opponent is burning, increases the damage of the ship by X amount of the attack and its cumulative. So now you're adding two cumulative damage boosts as well as a mitigation boost. And that's why even though this ship is a couple tiers higher, it easily defeats the other auger. If the other auger was crewed a little bit better, it would not be such an egregious lopsided win. But because of crewing, the one on the left ends up having a stellar victory. The one on the right ends up going home, tail tucked between the legs because it ran Gorkon for Hall Breach, but no critical builds and didn't even bring the piercing officer needed to fight an Argon. You need Charvenic, so Marcus and Kang didn't really help you out there. Directed attacks, or if you're going to go for more generic, go for a boosting of damage, not a boosting of piercing if you're going generic. That's my opinion. Hopefully these have helped you out with some of the ideas for your crewing. And if so, let me know in the comment section below. I love helping out players recruiting. Love the game itself. Love the community. Y'all are amazing. I'm so proud of y'all because y'all have just been growing and talking and chatting and change is coming, y'all. I'm just I'm being ultra positive today and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It feels good because we had so many negative things last week. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Live long and prosper. Stay safe with Space Cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Let me know if you learned something. If not, well, hopefully somebody else did. Bye. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.